The first thing that you want to do is toast it in the oven at 350 for about 7 minutes. While that's browning, get 3 eggs and put them into your mixing bowl um, and prepare your custard. What I'm going to do is kind of break them up by hitting them in the middle first. This way they kind of scramble and come together a little bit more smoothly. So after you've given them a good whisk and you know this is going to be the base of your custard so you want to make sure you beat the eggs um, pretty good. Alright so our base has come together pretty, pretty nicely so what we're going to do now is go ahead and start adding the other ingredients. First you want to add your three cups of heavy cream. After doing so you're going to go ahead and add one and a half cups of white sugar like so and then you're going to add two tablespoons of light brown sugar along with one teaspoon of cinnamon following that you'll be adding uh, one fourth cup of melted butter and then you can go ahead and give that a nice stir Okay, now that this comes together, we're going to work on cubing our bread. As you can see, I've already cut these up um, into cubes. What you can do is go down the middle once and then across twice and you can get the cubes. So what we want to do now is whisk um, the batter one more time just to make sure none of, the sh none of the sugar and the other ingredients have settled at the bottom. And then you can start putting in your squares of bread. Again, you can use, if you don't like raisins, you can use regular bread. I do like raisins and I love sh cinnamon, so um, I like this cinnamon toast, or cinnamon raisin toast. Um, it's a little bit of a cheat, but you know, it's the same effect if you were to use a fourth cup of raisins and white bread. So this is just a little bit easier. Um, and you can go ahead and continue to place them in. The heat, um, from the bread you know because you toasted them off will cause them to kind of stick together so you want to kind of uh, make sure that they're not they're not now what you want to do after you have all your bread in is kind of mash it down uh, to make sure that the bread absorbs the custard pretty good this is also your chance to do your final check to make sure that your bread isn't sticking together as this will cause clumps and clusters in your pudding now we're ready to go ahead and transport it over into our baking dish. This is just a regular 9 inch by 9 inch square baking dish and it's about 3 quarts so it should hold all this perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and dump this over in it and I'm going to take my whisk um, and just kind of move it around to make sure that it's evenly in the pan so that I, my bread pudding isn't lopsided. Um, so once I go ahead and get that situated, and I'm going to level it out and get it how I want it, I'm going to go ahead and put the, stick this in the oven at 350 for 55 minutes, 25 of which will be uncovered. In the last 30, you want to cover with aluminum foil and bake it off for another uh, 30 minutes. All right, here we go. Twenty five minutes down and thirty to go. You can see that our bread pudding is coming together rather nicely. It's taking its form and the custard is starting to kind of uh, bring everything together. It's baking really nicely. So as I stated before, you want to go ahead and cover it with the aluminum foil before you uh, place it back in the oven for the additional thirty minutes. And this will just make sure that it doesn't brown too much and look burnt. This is our final product, fresh out of the oven, and keep in mind that this is piping hot. The uh, custard hasn't had a chance to set up yet because I went to go ahead and cut it and serve it because my husband was actually waiting on it. Um, if you allow it to set up for about 20 minutes or so, then you know all the extra juices and everything, the bread will finish absorbing and you won't have that kind of custardy, gooey um at the you know film at the bottom of it but either or it still tastes great and tastes the same I'm gonna go ahead and have a try and as always it tastes great well I'm your host it's Miss Faith with Mrs. Kathy's Kitchen stay tuned for there'll be plenty more dishes to come
Well, you guys, that's all for this segment of Mrs. Kathy's Kitchen. I hope you learned something and plan to make one of these dishes for your loved ones. Until next time, bye-bye.